The Avery family owns a sprawling auto salvage business in Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. But in October 2005, something sinister was found among the wrecked cars. The partially concealed vehicle of a missing person. Teresa Halbach, a 25-year-old photographer from nearby Calumet County, had vanished without a trace. Detectives attempting to trace her footsteps began where she had left off. Her last appointment was with a man named Stephen Avery at his family salvage yard. She had driven there to photograph a minivan for sale. Forensic evidence links Stephen to Teresa's murder, but he denied the charges. I'd have to say I didn't do it. Well, if I did it, why would I stick around if I'm guilty? I won't. I'd be running. He even had an alibi. He had spent part of the time in which he was accused of murdering Teresa with his 16-year-old nephew and neighbor, Brendan Dassey. Instead of an alibi, that information turned out to be a promising lead. The Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department had the teenager questioned. He confessed in detail to aiding his uncle Stephen in the rape and murder of Teresa and the mutilation of her corpse. And we put her on the floor and then he shot her 10 times. I threw in a fire. Stephen stood trial in neighboring Calumet County in March 2007. At this time, the court will read the verdicts. We, the jury, find the defendant, Stephen A. Avery, guilty of first degree intentional homicide. As he was sentenced to life behind bars without parole for the first degree murder of Teresa Halbach. The following month, his nephew Brendan Dassey, 17 by then, was tried as an adult and sentenced to life imprisonment for murder, rape, and mutilation. As to count one, we, the jury, find the defendant, Brendan R. Dassey, guilty of first degree intentional... But the case proved to be highly controversial. Dassey's confession had played an important role in the convictions, but it also set off a rumble of disturbing questions, which, in the following years, swelled into a roar that was unleashed worldwide through a popular 2015 Netflix series. At trial, Brendan Dassey recanted his confessions, claiming that he was coerced. His defense argued that he had an IQ in the borderline deficiency range and that psychological testing showed him as highly suggestible, making him extremely likely to following his interrogator's lead, regardless of the truth. Officers repeatedly told Brendan that they knew he had participated in the crime, although they actually had no evidence for such a claim. We pretty much know everything. That's why we're talking to you again today. What was it? We have the evidence, Brendan. We just need you to, to be honest with us. We know, we just need you to tell us. At one point, an officer told young Brendan they were just there right. to help him. Yeah, we're kind of... Tell us that. So I can think of it. 
In the years that followed, the case climbed unsteadily through the courts. A real-life plot twist. A federal judge overturns the conviction of Brendan Dassey, subject of the popular Netflix documentary series, Making a Murderer. Ruling his confession was involuntary. Now, after nine years of incarceration, he may finally go free. But in December 2017, the Seventh Circuit ruled that the confession was valid, and they upheld his conviction. Brendan Dassey won two court battles before this new ruling, which could keep him in prison for the rest of his life. That federal appeals court finding he was not intimidated or coerced into confessing to rape and murder. The U.S. Supreme Court refused to hear an appeal. What began as a grisly murder of a photographer has since swollen into a global dialogue on coerced confessions and their aftermaths.